Ah, uh, hello, hello everyone. My name is Ahram Wizard. It's Boomer Sunday and it's Uplink Day. Um, as I was explaining and talking in chat, um, I am trying out this new connection. To, uh, so, what I did was um, another VTuber that I know um, that I know of posted on Twitter how she does multi-streaming. She doesn't use restreams. She uses a um, an OBS plugin. So that's what I'm using today. Uh, I was doing some testing on the YouTube side as well, as you can see in the chat. Um, <clears throat> so things I've learned is that I'm only able to see the Twitch chat unless I manually open up the YouTube chat as a pop-up. I'm not really too concerned because I can see the YouTube chat in my stream elements chat element uh, over there in the corner. So if somebody does talk on YouTube, I can see that. Uh, I just have to look over toward it. <clears throat> I have to keep an eye on it. I'll have to do some more testing on it. The reason that I wanted to swap over to doing something else is because I thought that Restream might be giving me some some bad latency. Um, I don't know because I, I, I have my stream up on my mobile phone. However, I'm at my house so my mobile phone is getting my stream pretty much immediately um whereas people that are watching might not have that luxury and might be buffering considerably for them and when i saw my like um my like bit rate on on the twitch dashboard uh sometimes it would go into the red even though that wasn't the case in um uh in 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 reality and also i'm looking at the uh obs output now i went into the red i've dropped uh quite a few frames but i don't know if that's on the youtube side or if it's just because i tried to open up youtube to see what was happening so um yeah let me know if i get any drop frames or anything let me know how the quality is for today i'm by default, I'm streaming into Twitch and I'm copying that output over to YouTube. So if anything, only the YouTube experience is going to be shite, but it's YouTube. It's shite anyway. <laughs> I don't really care. I don't really care if anybody watches me on the YouTube side. It's just there to show people that I'm live. So if you're watching people on YouTube and then you come across my my live stream, you can go and see... Um, you can, you can do the sensible thing and just go to Twitch and watch from Twitch. Okay, so it looks like it's okay. That first message you sent, Kylo, the one where you, talk, you typed multipass, that came in really late for me. So that was what was scaring me. I thought that... Um, I thought we'd have even worse latency issues, but it doesn't seem like we did. And... I haven't had any other drop frames other than me tabbing out to go to the YouTube side. So I think we should be okay. Okay, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fast now. Um, I disabled slime chat and the chat that you see on the screen right now is from Stream Labs. Because Stream Labs will actually grab all of your stream chats at once. Or at least that's how I have it set up. So, um, I'm getting dropped bit rates again. 10 seconds from me to your screen, which is abnormally long. Yeah. But I'm reading it when you're typing. Actually, 10 seconds is not that bad. That's that's still reasonable. That's still pretty reasonable. I wonder if I should just not try this. I, I was getting better... I was getting better results with just restream. I don't know how I don't know how um, Riona has it set up. I set it up like she had it, but I don't know. It it might be the case that she just has a way better internet than me, which is it, quite possible. Yeah, like I'm getting bars in the, the red. Hmm. I wonder if I should just. Here, let me stop the YouTube stream. Let me just stop the YouTube stream.
Okay. I've stopped the YouTube stream. And it looks like everything's okay. And that that delay might be um, several things. It could be on your end, Kylo, or it could be just Twitch being dumb. Both of those are uh, distinct possibilities. Um, my Twitch dashboard says that I'm in the green. My Twitch dashboard shows me as being really clean, so... Um, so I think what I'll just do is I'm just going to go... Give me one second. I'm going to go delete that YouTube video, and I'm just going to upload this video as a, a VOD on YouTube later. Um, it was worth a shot. Unfortunately, you can't test these things out unless you're actually streaming. So, um... Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Um, let me go real quick into my content live, and, um... I'm just going to delete this so people don't get confused. And I'll just upload Uplink as a VOD. It's not that big of a deal. Um, very rarely do people watch me on the YouTube side, so... And, and most people would prefer, I think, having the VOD on YouTube as opposed to having the actual live on YouTube. But, but now I'm only streaming to Twitch. And... I'm OBS says I'm in the green Twitch dashboard says I'm in the green so I should be okay let me switch back to slime chat too I think that looks cleaner okay there we go anyway hello everyone my name's Anthon Wizard um this is Uplink so on Thursday we played Greyhack and Greyhack is like the most um how should I put this the most realistic hacking simu simulator that you could possibly ever play this is like gray hack but it's a lot more slimmed down so it's a lot more straightforward it's a lot more gamified so that you don't for example you don't work inside of a terminal like in gray hack you work like in a fake gui a fake gui so we have to think up a new name for ourselves new user This is very 90s, by the way. Welcome to the Uplink Public Access Server. Uplink Corporation maintains the largest list of freelance agents in the world, and we have operated for the last decade with a flawless record of satisfied customers and successful agents. Our company acts as an anonymous job center, bringing corporations together with agents who can work for them. Our company also provides a rental of essential gateway computers to all agents, which allow unparalleled security in high-risk environments. You're here because you wish to join this company. Okay. That goes. Okay, that's the same thing. Register as an agent. Your Uplink, Uplink membership package includes a gateway computer at a secure location. You will connect to this machine from your home computer when you're working for Uplink. You can have it upgraded at a later stage if necessary. So, much like in Greyhack, you can upgrade your PC, but it's not as granular. It's all gamified. A low interest loan of 30,000 credits with Uplink International Bank to get you started. Access to our bulletin board system. I love bulletin board systems. I miss them. The usual place for Uplink agents to find work. And you'll be able to officially rate it as an Uplink agent. And we'll monitor your progress. As your ratings increase, you'll find new avenues of work become available. What's that cursed looking IP4, Teres? I know, right? This is very cursed. This is very 90s. Welcome in, Quack. It is very 90s, isn't it? Um, it's going to get more 90s. I think... I think this game is set in the far future of 2010 and it was made in like 98 <laughs> so it's gonna get even better trust me okay our name shall we be blot man again shall we be blot man or um we could be zanchan It looks like it allows for anything. Actually, I kind of like that. Our password is just going to be password 123 as usual. I don't know if you have to re-enter that. 
I played a hacking game yesterday. I don't know if the punchline won't work, but it's called Celebrity Sack. That sounds interesting. <laughs> what celebrities could you hack? All right. A Blink Corporation will not ask for any personal details in the event of you being charged with an illegal operation. A corpor corporation will be forced to disavow all knowledge of your actions. However, you'll be safe from arrest as your real world arrest will never be stored. Fascinating that this corporation effectively allows for darknet activities, but it's allowed to continue to operate. <laughs> You're essentially aiding and abetting criminals, but... I, I don't think it works this way, but who am I to judge? Anyway. A Blink has corporation... A Blink Corporation has offices all around the world. Please select a nearby location for your gateway. You'll dial into this location when you, up, you use a Blink. Well, we're absolutely not going to link into London. Uh, we absolutely have to be from Moscow. As as we all know, we have to be from Moscow if you're going to be a hacker. Hong Kong's also a, a, a reasonable choice. I don't think this actually matters in the game, at least not immediately. Tokyo would be quite funny if we wanted to be weebs. Also, how's the volume? I might turn the volume down just a tad. The, Uplo the Uplink soundtrack is actually godlike. This is like, I listen to this soundtrack on the daily. It's actually really, really, really good. But let me know if it's a little too loud. Let's go with Moscow to be a true hacker. Registration is now taking place. As part of your membership, uh, you will be assigned a gateway computer system in your chosen server room. This will act as your jumping off point to the rest of the net. When you next log in, you'll connect directly from your home computer to this gateway machine, and from there to the rest of the world. Should any of your actions be traced back to your gateway, Uplink Corporation will disavow any knowledge of your actions and will destroy your account. Your gateway machine will be also be destroyed. Rental of your co computer will cost 300 credits a month. So we have to take on missions just to pay our rental fee for the gateway computer. It's that one mini game where you cut away the screen while enemies move on about it with cartoon babies underneath. Oh, <laughs> not this kind of hacking. I get it. Wink, wink. Oh, yeah, look at these. Oh, yeah, TCP IP connections. Fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, look at us. Look at us. Look at us download our RAM. All right. A blink operating system successfully started on the gateway. All right, we've 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 remoted into our remote desktop computer in Moscow. Your gateway computer has been successfully set up and will accept only your username and password in the future. When you next start Uplink on your home computer, you'll be connected automatically to the gateway. In your email, you'll find a message from Uplink Corporation with some useful IP addresses. So you'll also find the Uplink test mission, which will allow you to practice hacking. Would you like to run the tutorial? Yes. We have to. I I played the first mission, but I forgot how to do it. So let's all go through it again, because this is a little bit different from Greyhack. We're not going to be able to use our own realistic uh, knowledge of computers. You have to use the knowledge that the game gives you. Yeah, the little, little dial-up connection. Very nice. All right, welcome to the Uplink tutorial. This program should help you get started. Click next to continue. First things first, you can move this tutorial on the screen by left clicking on the title bar. And right click will put it down again. So already we have a little bit of a different GUI where it's not just move. It's not like hold left click to move. Like in modern systems. We'll put it up, up there. We're going to start by looking at some of the facilities available on your screen. Click on the flashing hardware button. That's down here. Oh, let me capture my cursor. It's not coming through. I should have been, I should have been doing that for Greyhack as well, but I... Um, for Greyhack, it wasn't as important, but let me turn it on for this. I thought it would automatically capture the cursor, but it doesn't. There we go. Um... This is an old game, so it's one of those games that resizes your window manually uh, whenever it opens up. So, um, like, 
I can't see the dashboard. Usually I can see the dashboard, the Twitch dashboard on my third monitor, but it resizes all my windows so I can't see it. Also, I might just turn down the volume just slightly, just a, just a hair. There we go. Yeah, look at, all, look at all these beautiful numbers. Aren't they beautiful? All right, show the hardware. Uh, this screen shows the status of your gateway. Your gateway is the link between your home PC and the rest of the net. Okay, all right, are you ready for our... Um... Oops. Are you ready for our statistics? We've got a 60 gigahertz CPU. We have one... Giga quals? Giga quants? GQL? I d I've never used that unit of measurement before. I feel like I'm missing something. We have 24 giga quants of memory capacity. And we have no devices and no HUD. In reality, the gateway is a computer sitting in one of our offices. You'll dial in you'll dial into this gateway automatically every time you start uplink. At the moment, your gateway is very basic. It has a slow processor and very little memory. You'll be able to upgrade later. Click on the flashing memory banks button. This screen shows all the files you've stored in your memory banks. At the moment, you only have this tutorial and a couple of utility files. This is a lot like in Nier. Remember in Nier Automata? Um, for those who haven't played Nier Automata, in Nier Automata, because you're a robot in that, um, you don't have like equipment slots, you have memory slots. And it's it's almost exactly like this. It's almost one-to-one -one exactly like this, where programs take up a block of memory. Yeah, GQ, I've never heard of it either. I think it's made up. I hope it's made up. Otherwise, I feel really dumb. I'm going to say Giga Quants is what it's going to be, but I can't prove that. Click on the flashing personal status button. I'm a neuromancer. Sick. This screen shows your official ratings. These reflect your skill and success and will no doubt increase in time. We'll see about that. I am not a criminal. <laughs> I'm a neuromancer with a neutral rating and I'm not a criminal. I'm a grade 16 uplink agent. As your rating increases, you'll find more interesting and profitable avenues of work become available to you. So this is a lot like in Armored Core, where you start out as a rookie and get better missions as you go on. Click on the flashing finance button. Here you can see how much money you have in your bank accounts. We have 3000 money credits in this IP bank, which I guess is like a wallet, even though Bitcoin was not invented yet during the game on this account. Okay. The final button allows you to compose a new email and send it. We don't need to do this at the moment. Okay. The big button to the left allows you to to run the software tools on your gateway. You can start any program from here. Okay. We've got a file deleter, a file copier. Uh, we have things for like cameras and devices, hardware devices. We've got security. Crackers, bypasses, LAN tools, and other. There's a tutorial. These two boxes show the date and time up there. And your current location on the net. There. These buttons can be used to accelerate time. This can be useful when you're waiting for something to happen. This column there shows all currently running programs and how much CPU time is used by each. You can see this tutorial program in the list. Uh, by that, I think they mean um, this list. Or I guess like this, I guess. Bring up the global communication screen by clicking on the world map. This screen allows you to set up long distance connections that bounce around the world. You'll make extensive use of this screen. But yeah, I think it is a, It is definitely an alternate history. And it... It doesn't go very much into the backstory of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Alternate history where it's 2010 and you're still using dial-up. 
you'll make extensive use of this screen. We'll come back here later, click the close button to return to the main screen. The close button, you say, I guess cancel. Okay. New emails will queue up in the bottom right of the screen. Click on the email to read it. Ah, so we have a compose mail button and we have a, a read mail button. Quantum dial up. <laughs> you may or may not be calling this phone. It, 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 it doesn't, we don't know. Your connection is Schrodinger's cat until, um, until otherwise you connect. This is an email from Uplink. It's basically a welcome message. You should take the time to read it at some point. All right, let's take the time. Your details have been entered into our account. Congratulations, you're now an officially rated Uplink agent. We recommend you complete the Uplink test mission before attempting any real work. Your first stopping off point should be the Uplink inter internal services system. That. Once there, log in and click on help, followed by getting started. Good luck. Good luck. Links include the internal services system. Codes included are the username and password. As well as mail, you will also get missions queuing up at the bottom right of the screen. They'll remain here until you complete them. Uh, I guess it's this? Yeah. So we have a test mission. Steal data from a file server. Gain access to the uplink test machine by breaking the outer security layer. Access the file server and download the target file uplink test data. Remove any traces of your hack. Return the data to us at address internal at uplink.net. This screen shows all the information you need on how to complete the mission. You should always study this in depth before beginning work. You'll learn how to complete missions like this in part two of the tutorial. For now, click on the close button. That is the end of tutorial one. You should have an overview by now of the basic functions on screen. Click next to continue. All right. Tutorial two. Welcome to the part two of the tutorial. We will now show you how to complete your first hack for Uplink. Your first hack will be the uplink test mission. Click on the mission description to read the details. You should read it carefully, but the basic aim is to break into the uplink test machine and steal a file. We're going to start by connecting to the target. Select uplink test machine from the list of bookmarked links on the screen. All right, it's right here. I still feel like this music is like way too loud. Let me drop this down another couple of... There we go. All right. <laughs> we physically dial in. We're now dialed into the test machine. You should read the opening text message before clicking next. All right. This will be your first opportunity to hack into a real computer system with real defenses. There's no point in trying to hack a real computer system until you can do the uplink test in your sleep. You'll be traced during it, your attempts, so remember to monitor the communication lines. However, no action will be taken against you should you be traced. Hint. Never connect directly to the target server. Bounce your connection around the world. It'll make you much harder to track and give you longer to complete your work. We could have done this in Greyhack, but I didn't. Uh, but that is a possibility, so we can... Right now, we're connected to a Hong Kong server, it looks like, but we don't need to be doing that. Remember that you will leave logs on the computers you will use as relays. Ideally, your connection should use a computer which allows you easy and free free risk log access so you can erase your tracks without fear of punishment. Right. Click on the start the test button to bypass the screen. This is a user ID screen. You'll need a username and password to get past, which we don't have. In reality, you will almost never have a genuine username and password. You'll have to hack your way in. All right, we got to do some hacking. In order to hack our way in, we'll need to buy some software. Disconnect from this machine. Beep. The best place to buy software for hacking is the Uplink internal services system. Connect to that site. Beep, 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 beep. 
unlike most sites, you do have a valid username and password because you're an up a registered uplink agent. You can either type your username and password in or just click on the end click on them to enter them automatically. Do this now. All right, we're in there. We're in. Your authorization has been accepted and your actions are being monitored by Uplink's central computer system. This computer system provides a number of valuable services to the hack community, including software tools, which we need. You can access Uplink related news stories, accept work from contractors and upgrade your computer system. We want to upgrade our software so we can hack user ID screens. Click on the software upgrades from the menu. The screen lists all the software tools that Uplink currently has for sale. Items in grey are out of your price range. The first tool you'll need is one of the basic Uplink agent tools, Password Breaker. Scroll down the list and select the Password Breaker. The current price for this tool is 1500 credits. Click Purchase. That software now has been uploaded into your memory banks and 1500 credits have been deducted. We can now try breaking that password. Disconnect from here and connect to the Uplink test machine. Bypass the opening text screen. Beep, 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 beep. This will be your first opportunity to hack into a real computer system with real defenses. Uh, there's no point in trying to hack a real computer system, blah, blah, blah. We want to run our password breaker software on the screen. Our new software will appear in our software menu. Start your new password breaker by selecting it from the menu. It'll be under crackers. Uh, there we go. The password breaker is now running. You, we now need to give it a target. Click on one of the text boxes labeled name or code. This will start the hack attempt. Beep, 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 beep. Hacking. Oh dear, you've been disconnected by the computer. You were trying to hack in too. Oh, you, you were trying to hack into. They noticed the fact that you were trying to hack their password screen and kicked you off their system. Because this is a test machine, you won't be punished. In the real world, you could now face a fine or even jail time. Remember, kids, never run a password cracker off of your uh, local IP address. This tutorial will now show you how to hack into a computer without being caught in any way. The first thing we need is a warning system so we can tell if they are about to catch us. We can buy software for that. Connect to the Uplink internal services system and go to the software sales menu. As before. Scroll down the list and click on trace tracker. This one. The item of software can tell you how close you are to being tracked or traced. There are several versions of this item. Higher versions have more features, but are more expensive. You can afford a trace tracker version 2. Use the next button to select that version and click on purchase. So this is very important. You can buy like better upgrade versions of your fictitious hacking software. And it doesn't default to the best version. Like I can even go higher if I, if I felt like it. Actually, how much money do I have? Could I actually do that? I could, uh, but I won't. We'll buy the 600 credit version. You've now bought that item of software. You should run it straight away from the software menu under security. Trace Tracker is now running. It's currently telling you that nobody's trying to trace your location at this time. Having a warning system is a step in the right direction. We also need to slow down any traces that are being performed on us. We do this by, by call bouncing. This involves extending our connection around the world to confuse the opponent. First, disconnect from this system. Beep. Disconnected. Bring up the global communications map. Beep. We need to establish a long distance connection to our target, the test machine. Bounce through several intermediate subsystems. We build this connection by clicking on each of the intermediate nodes in sequence and then click on the in location into NIC. Bam. Click on the location uplink public access server. Cancel if you make a mistake. Uh, public access server. Oh, oh, there it is. Where is this? 
Is that in Queensland? I think that's in Queensland, right? Because, like, Sydney... Sydney's, like, down there. I think that... I think that's Queensland? And then this looks like Jakarta. I have no idea where that is. This is supposedly, like, Shanghai or... Or, um... That's probably Shanghai. Uh... Click on the location, internal services system. Beep. Finally, click on the target, uplink test machine. Beep. We're now set up a long distance connection to the target, bounced through three intermediate nodes. It will take the opponent a lot longer to trace and disconnect us this time. Click on connect to establish the link. Connect. Bypass the opening screen. Start the password breaker now. Target the password box. As soon as you do this, it, they will begin tracing you. Click on proceed when it is finished. All right, we're hacking. Is this, is this Rosebud? It's Rosebud, isn't it? It's Rosebud. It's Rosebud. It's Rosebud. It's Rosebud. It's Rosebud. There. Proceed. The password's been broken, we're in. Note the trace is now in progress. Uh, that's behind me. This is only a test machine, so it'll be a slow trace. If you recall the mission description, we have to steal a file from the system. Click on Access File Server. The file we have to steal is named Uplink Test Data. We'll need to use a file copier to download the file. Start the file copier utility from your software menu under File Utilities. Target the file in question by clicking on it. The file is now being copied. You can speed this up by clicking on this button at the top to divert more CPU time to this task. Oh, I see. We finished copying the file. We now want to dump it into our memory banks. Bring up the memory banks screen. Slam it in there. We now got the file. Disconnect from the computer system. In the real world hack, we'd now have to make some attempts to delete the access logs that we just left behind. Every time you log on to a system, copy a file, or make any change, you leave behind access logs. These logs can be used by other agents to trace you and put you in jail. You may even end up tracing another agent one day. Hint, hint. Back to the mission. Our final task is to send the copied file back to the customer. Bring up the mission description. Click on reply. We need to attach the stolen file to this email before we send it. Click on the file button and select uplink test data. Now click on send. The mission has now been completed. You'll receive two emails, both from uplink. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move myself. Let me move my spout to capture. I'm going to move myself closer to the center. Oops. Not erase myself, just move it. Okay, this might be actually better. Even though I've got some cut off. That's okay. There we go. Now you can see, because there's, there's buttons on the right side. And the left side, this is actually kind of hard to stream as a VTuber. The mission has now been completed. You'll receive two emails, both from Uplink. The first is congratulating you on completing the mission and informing you that you've been paid. In this case, nothing. The second is informing you that your rating has gone up and you'll now be able to do some more dangerous slash profitable work. You should now go to the Uplink internal services system and look through the work available to you. This is the end of part two of the tutorial. Part three, you'll learn how to start making money as an Uplink agent. I want to learn how to make money. Let's move this up a bit. Welcome to part three of the tutorial. Hopefully you finished the test mission. This part will show you what to do next. The Uplink Internal Services System is the place where you find all of your future work. Connect there now.
access. Uplink maintains a list of available missions. You can access this list by selecting mission list from the menu. Again, this is a lot like uh, Armored Core. You should see a few missions that are available now. If you don't see any available missions, you can accelerate time until some appear. You can use these buttons at the top of the screen to accelerate time until a mission becomes available. Each time you successfully complete a mission, you'll be paid and your uplink rating will go up. As your rating goes up, more missions will appear. Employers are more likely to offer you more dangerous missions and more pay as your ratings get higher. In addition, your Neuromancer rating is affected by the types of missions you do. This rating is effectively a record of your morals. So they had that in Greyhack as well. They called it Karma, but it is effectively the same thing. Yeah, what, what the hell? How come this game from 1998 didn't predict VTubers would would stream this in, in 2024? How, how, how shameful. You may find employees are unwilling to give you certain... Who was it? Was there any VTubers in 2010? Like, hypothetically, what VTubers could have been streaming this in 2010? I think... I think Girl DM was actually active, but she didn't look anything like she does today. But I, I do think that I seem to recall Girl DM's history goes back all the way to 2012. I'd have to actually ask her or look on the wiki, but I think, I think, I think Girl DM and Annoying Orange were like the only people that could be streaming this at this, at this point in time. You may find employees are unwilling to give you certain missions if your Neuromancer rating's too low. Exit out of the mission screen. Uplink Corporation maintains a large database of useful information on the subject of hacking and computer security. Select help from the menu. As you attempt more complex missions, you'll undoubtedly run into more complex security systems. All of the information we have on these systems is kept in these, pro these help pages. If you get stuck, this is the place to look for data. You may learn that you need some new software or hardware upgrade. Exit out of the help screen. Once you are working on the harder missions, you'll find your current gateway is too limiting. You may need faster CPU capabilities, more memory capacity or bandwidth, or more, more personal security. It's like gateway upgrades from the menu. Okay, so again, this is a lot like Greyhack. It even gives you the same sort of CPU motherboard graphical representation, just in a more rudimentary way. This screen shows you all the gateways that you can buy from Uplink. Currently, you have the first one off the list, Gateway Alpha. After a few missions, you'll be able to afford to upgrade. Your old gateways part exchange, so you can work up the list slowly. Uplink Corporation does not store any records on who is using which gateway. This means that your gateway can be traced, but you are safe. If you're traced during a hack, we will be forced to seize your accounts and gateway. That's spelled wrong. This means you will have to start from the bottom of the gateway list again when you rejoin. So if we fail a mission, imagine if we fail a mission using the Trinity, we would have to go all the way back to gateway alpha and work our way up back to this amount of money. That's really broke. That's really very brutal. So don't ever fail a mission. Later gateways have room for your own security. You can install cameras and motion sensors, which will give you early warning of trouble. If you destroy your gateway before it's seized, again, uh, actually, no, I before E, except after C. Have I been spelling it wrong this entire time? I might have. <laughs> Do sock puppet accounts count as VTubers? If hand cam streams count, yeah. If hand can streams count, then yeah, I think it would. They just have to have some sort of and like Game Grumps had animated characters, remember? Like Game Grumps and who else? Uh maybe like Super Best Friends. They they had like animated characters, but they didn't have them on the screen. Actually, come to think of it, it's kind of funny. All these big name VTuber, no, not VTuber, big name streamers on YouTube back in the day, they absolutely had the capability of running as a PNG tuber, but they didn't. 
it's kind of funny that we they never made the connection. Hey, wait, I've got I've got a character that I paid money for that is animated. Why don't I just have it in the bottom of the screen and just have it animated and move? It's sort of weird when you think about it, right? Isn't that odd? I guess the reason's because All right, his history lesson here for people that don't know a lot about VTubing and playing video games on the internet, which is actually super serious business. That sort of thing actually started on um, the Let's Play forum of Something Awful. So Something Awful actually kind of invented this whole idea of Let's Playing. PewDiePie and um, Germa and uh, Markiplier, they all got their start on something awful. And this was back in the day in like the early 2000s, like 2003, 2004, when something awful was still competing with 4chan. And 4chan really, there was a big heated competitive environment between 4chan and something awful. And 4chan would always make fun of people that use something awful because back in the day to use something awful, and I think to this day, you had to pay money to use the something awful service. So to make an account on something awful, you had to pay 10 US dollars. And it was a big running joke on 4chan that um, if you said you were from something awful, people would go, oh, I hope you have 10 bucks and 10 bucks became this meme because you had to pay money to get in there. Um, conversely, the, the flip side of that is that the Something Awful forums, not only were they very um, heavily moderated, think Reddit, think like the worst of Reddit. It was very heavily moderated. You really couldn't say what you wanted. You're getting scammed because you pay money for it. And however, you had very few like trolls and you still had trolls, but you had very few, like, rubbish people. You know what I mean? Just people that just log on, that don't know what they're talking about, and they just say a bunch of gobshite, and... It, the $10 really filtered people, is what I'm saying. So, even though the content wasn't really any better, it was a lot more concise. So, consequently, something awful felt more like a a gentleman's club, right? It felt like a gentleman's club of esteemed, prestigious user base. So that lended itself more to a cult of personality where um, people like um, people like Voidburger, um, who else was on there? Who, who's, who was Voidburger married to? She's married to him now. Chip Cheesem. Chip Cheesem. Chip Cheesem, Void Burger, um, uh, Slow Beef. Slow Beef was a big one in the Let's Playing community. Slow Beef was pretty much the god of Let's Playing back in like the early 2000s. And a lot of people modeled their behavior off of Slow Beef. Not actually off of PewDiePie. PewDiePie was not really associated with the Something Awful forums. He was only tangentially related to him because they were talking about him. But PewDiePie, though, was a face cam streamer. So at the time of like 20, 2005, 2010, they would have still probably predominantly been face cam streamers. That was the meta. And even though they could have animated PNGs instead of a face cam, they chose not to. And I really can't understand why. I don't know why you wouldn't. I guess because it was just the meta. It was just the norm, right? Anyway. Interesting backstory there. I'm sure no nobody cares anymore because <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Um, if you destroy a gateway before it's seized, you can normally save your account and name. However, you will lose, of course, lose your gateway. This is the end of tutorial three. You should have a good idea of what you want to do next. Uplink Corp wishes you good luck in the future. Thank you. All right. Close. All right, so we're free. 
We're free now to just do whatever we feel like. Can I delete the tutorial now? It's taking up space. Can I delete it and delete that? There we go. I did. Okay, so this is intuitive. Let's read our mail. Congratulations, Agent Zanchan. You have now reached the next uplink rating. Your rating is now beginner. Very good. All right, and this is what it looks like when you win. You get money from uplink for doing this. Your details have now been entered into our account. Congratulations. Very good. Only reason I couldn't see why it was done before was because technology barrier to set all the animations and sync it with the video. Webcam is just buying it, letting it run, and add it as a source. True. True. We didn't have, like, a PNG, animated PNG program, although... I'd argue that... I really like this song, by the way. Uh, I'd argue that it wouldn't be too hard to take your mic input and just have it flip between two two PNGs at the bare minimum. I think also I remember very, very, very early on, I remember some people didn't have microphones as, as very early PNG tubers and VTubers. They didn't have mics because the mics were just prohibitively expensive. And what they would do is they actually have hotkeys to physically switch their emotions and expressions. So they could physically hotkey it and change it that way. I do remember a few people very early on, even Girl DM might have even done that, very early on did not have a mic and their webcam just doesn't have an, an onboard microphone. So they physically switched it with hotkeys. Which you could totally do right now. That's really all most programs are doing. So. Okay. Food for thought. Something to think about. You have to know how to program that, and I doubt a lot of college dropouts have that knowledge. I don't know. The vast majority of, like, VTuber people that I've encountered, very few of them have actually been college dropouts. The ones that are college dropouts don't do a lot of tech stuff, Drew. But, again, I have to go back to Girl DM because Girl DM was so foundational to so much of VTubing as we know today. She's really, truly, like, an unsung hero of VTubing. And I think she's very competent in computer programming. I have to imagine that there were some people that were very competent enough to do something like that. Also, I don't know if we had, like, no, we still had OBS. I remember having OBS back in, like, 2015. So I know OBS existed. But you do have a point. For the people that just did nothing but girlfriend experience, which... Girlfriend experience, though... Girlfriend experience did not exist back then. Girlfriend experience was a... A 2019 thing. That's when everyone was, was locked in their homes because of lockdown, because of COVID. And they were super horny, and they needed to talk to women. Yeah, you could buy a kill cam that danced the noise. Yeah, there, there were inputs, audio, audio to hardware inputs, so it wouldn't be a huge leap. But I think it just wasn't the norm. You know, I, I, I know obviously there had to be people that were very into computers back then that could have easily programmed something like that. I just think it wasn't the norm, right? It, it just it's also a normy thing, right? Normal people still use Facebook, right? The idea of having your actual physical face exposed to the internet is something that still eludes a lot of people. They're like, oh, what's the problem? I don't understand what the problem is. And you even see it in VTubers. A lot of VTubers succumb to this. Um, I just remember, like, just recently even uh, Lena 
has been posting more of an actual face. And I don't mean like face with a mask, like an actual face. She's, she's super hot, by the way. <laughs> no, n not being weird, but Lena, you, you're super hot. Jesus. Um, DM knows what she's doing. She's still getting going strong. You, you, yeah, DM is godlike. She really... Um, I'm going to go into some lore about me. I put in for a VTuber agency. Not recently, but like last year. When I was still starting out, I applied to a VTuber agency. Uh, I won't say who, it doesn't really matter. I didn't, I didn't get in, obviously. But in my presentation, I said one of my biggest influences was Girl DM. Because she's just... You wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know it by watching her streams, but she's actually been doing it for a long, long time. Um, but back to going in, like, face posting. Yeah, Juniper face posted. Um, I, I think you see it in a lot of girls. They, they like to the face post. Or at least they do body post. I think body posting is something different. Body posting where you don't show your face. I think that's okay because you're not really doxing yourself if you look pretty generic. Because you, you're like, you can't really tell. Um, but when you just... When you just show your, like, IRL face, and uh, let me find... Let me find Lena's post. I don't know if Lena's posted her IRL face before. I feel like she has, because it didn't really bother her any. Lena. She posted it very recently. She might have deleted it. Let's see. She was doing like a cooking stream with Ollie. Yeah, like here, right? Also, I like that. I was watching Lena's cooking stream and I got really self-conscious because her her kitchen is fantastic. It's so clean. I wish I had a kitchen like that. But then she posted this picture and um, her mirror is like really dirty and I felt a lot better because it's like my mirror. It's like my mirror. Yeah, she has. But this is like a recent picture. And she's not even wearing a mask. Like Onigiri and Bao and all of them have posted in IRL. But they're, they're still at least wearing masks. But like, I don't know. Has Lena been doing IRL stuff before? I don't recall. In any case. Watch Lena. She's amazing. Um, yeah, mirrors, am I right? I'm glad it's not just me. I'm really glad that it's not just me that has a really bad, messy mirror. My mirror is awful. If I showed you my bathroom, I kind of am like... I'm kind of like the VTuber uh, meme. Right? <laughs> I won't go into too much detail in case you're eating food at the moment, but I'm, I'm kind of like the VTuber me. I'm, my, my, the rest of my living space is very clean, but when, when I moved in, my, my, my bathroom is already a mess. It was already very like stained. And I, I tried my best. God help me. I tried my best, but it, it, it was just not feasible you know a lot of people in that situation with a bad bathroom yeah mine's so i do this weird thing i don't have a mirror in my shower so when i go to shave i have to do this weird thing where there's a mirror right next to my shower but it's outside of the shower so i kind of like crane my body to the side and I'm like shaving at a 90 degree, uh, like a 45 degree angle. And my shaving, shavings just go everywhere. They flop out of the shower and they just plop onto the like floor. And I have to clean that up. But it basically, my bathroom looks like the grudge just exploded. Because I have like very thick matted dark hair and I shed like a dog. So... I just have lots of dark black hair everywhere and it, it looks really awful and it looks more disgusting than it actually truly is 
I guess. I'm, I'm not making any guarantees. Anyway, uh, I've, I've talked enough. Let's go back to the game. <laughs> uh, let's take on the mission. It's not fair either, because a lot of people, like, women's bathrooms tend to be a bit cleaner, look a bit cleaner, unless they really go hard in it. Yeah, it's hacking time. But, like, if you're a woman, number one, your hair is usually a lot more fair. It's not as heavy. And when you do shed your hair, it doesn't tend to, like, show up as much. If you've got light-colored hair. If you've got, like, any, any Asian women who may be watching can attest to it that, like, it is just like the grudge. If you're an Asian woman, your black hair will just go everywhere. And it, it looks a lot messier than it really is. So I'm like that, even though I'm not Asian. Uh, it, it, any any Asian woman can absolutely attest to that. Or Asian men, I suppose. All right. Let's uh, hack into a computer and delete key files. Let's do that. This job has been assigned an uplink difficulty of two. Okay, I can do that. Thank you for working for Microsoftware. Target computer, location quadricore. Here's the IP, here's that. Destroy this data and all backups. Send a notice and collision to internal at that. Okay. All right, there's quadricore. Let's first establish, let's first start doing some pinging. From our gateway, we'll go to internic. And then from internic, we'll go to public access. And then the I SS system. We could even go from the test machine. All right. We have to hack in. So let's use our cracker. One has serious lung problems, the other has serious hoarding problems. I'm not a hoarder. I try very hard to like get rid of as much stuff as I can. I actually don't have a lot. A lot of the things that I have are just VTubing and streaming related. And I have to keep them in my home. Okay, we had to disconnect. All right, so that was a quick trace. Um, the thing that I, I didn't do correctly was I didn't know which thing to delete. I could have done that faster, but uh, I didn't delete the right thing. All right, so we need to delete quad data 47037. Let's try this again. So this is a lot more like a video game type of hacking where you have to do it real fast. It's a lot more like a movie. Four, seven, oh, three, seven. Yep, I have to dis disconnect again. Okay, um, let's try allocating some better um, CPU speed. I didn't, I still didn't see the file. And then we'll go to the international bank too, and then back. Back to it. Oh, I can't go to the bank. Okay. In my internet server system uplink. Okay, so we're going to run the password crack cracker, but I'm going to give it more um, CPU speed. Like 
that much more. Because we're losing time um, to the password cracker. 47037. There it is. Okay. We got it. Uh, I think we did it. So now we can say reply. I have deleted key files. Please pay me. Congratulations. We did it. Yeah, it's a lot more stressful. It's a lot more like how you hack in like a movie. So it's a lot more like fun that way. Awesome. Good. They paid us. Let's do another one. Uh, how much money do we have in the bank at the moment? We have 2,600 credits. Um, What are we behind on? I think CPU speed might be better. But we can't upgrade at the moment, can we? Uh, if we go to uh, the shop. It, it's, it's especially difficult because um, my mouse is moving really fast because this game plays in like a 640 by 480 screen. So... The smallest mouse movement is actually, like, really fast for me. And I don't think I can change that. I don't think I can turn it down. Hardware upgrades. Processors. We could go to an 80 gigahertz processor. Or we could hold out for a 100 gigahertz. We almost have enough to buy a 100. So, let's just do another mission. We don't need memory at the moment. And what about modems? 4,000 for a 4 giga quants modem. Um, the modem, I assume, affects download speed. That's why I have to imagine it affects. The game really didn't tell us about that. Are there shortcuts? I don't think so. I don't think there are. I have to manually press all the buttons. And you see, you saw there that I had to like open up the the mail menu as that was going. Um, because it wouldn't stay up. It's a very old game, so there's not a lot of quality of life sort of improvements on it. Let's read the news. Is this us? Video Deck discovered this morning that a massive quantity of computer data has been stolen from one of their central mainframes. It's believed around 70 gigaquads. Okay, so so it is gigaquads. That is what this fictitious unit is. Of confidential corporate data was stolen by this hacker, and it was probably copied to a temporary file server somewhere on the web. Video Tech have said that they are considering all options to catch this hacker and the corporation that paid them. Right. Nothing about... Oh, okay. This is this is the one that we did. QuadraCorp discovered this morning that massive quantity of computer data was stolen. I think this was us. Because we hacked Quadra. Alright. Let's go to missions. Find and destroy crucial data on the mainframe. Alright. Accept the contract. Oh, okay. I have to accept the employer... I have to contact the employer first, okay. Oh, cool. Okay, so we can have a conversation with the mission givers. On our uh, IRC client, I guess, is what we're on. Thank you for your time, Agent. How can we help? Um, who's the target? We'd rather not reveal that at this time. Okay, well, what do you want me to do? A security to talk. Security be low, okay. Why so much money? No particular reason. Um 
If I say I want half the money now, are they more willing to give me the mission? Okay. 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 Right. Odd. Cool. Okay. So we could have actually, we could have like scammed them technically. Thank you for working with Cyberlink. We have to connect to Uninet on that IP, that IP, that horrible IP. Destroy this data and all backups. Send a notice of completion to that. Okay. Right, right. That's why you would pay forward usually, but we could just not ever do this. <laughs> they would, they wouldn't know. Although our ranking would probably go down. Um, okay. Destroy all this this data and all the backups. Question. Let's go back to internal services. Question. Does the trace tracker... It informs you on the progress of any traces on your connection. Is there a software that... Oh, there's a log deleter. We should probably be running this. Deletes the contents of an access log from a computer. Leaves an empty log behind. Why would I need to upgrade this? Are there newer versions? Oh, okay. They, they do different things. Let's just buy the, the regular log deleter. What trace tracker am I running at the moment? I'm not a criminal. Uh, I'm running version 2 of the trace tracker. So I, I have a pretty good trace tracker. What, what about... Trace tracker doesn't stop your self from being traced. It just, it's more granular, I guess. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Hack a dictionary? A cheap and fast method of breaking passwords. This software tool tries every word in a 10,000 word dictionary as a password. It is faster than a password breaker, but not guaranteed to find an answer. Hmm. I have a hacker dictionary. Um, the one I use is called RockU, and that's the standard one that comes with most, like, hacker-oriented, um, OSs and software. So th this is like RockU, RockU.txt. It works pretty well. Yeah, like a true hidden one. I don't know how good we have to be. This is an introductory mission, so I, I imagine we don't have to be that good. I also... Okay, so we're going to just delete. Um, we're just going to delete the file. So we don't have to worry about memory banks because um, we're not going to store the data on our side. We're just going to delete it. We're going to hack into the mainframe and delete the data. We can probably upgrade Password Breaker. That's version 1. Or we could buy Hacker Dictionary. Because, so... We're getting slowed down on the breaking in part. Um, how much money do I have? I have 2,950 credits. Um, and we'll get like, what, 1,700 from this? So... Let's, let's buy it. How much is the next version? Oh, there's only one version. Okay. Okay, let's buy it. Awesome. All right, so now... Now we have a hacker dictionary and a log deleter, so we can be really, really, really good. Uh, we just need to bounce our connection around a bit better. Let's open up the mail again. 
All right, so this is what we need to delete. Destroy this data and all backups. Okay. It doesn't say that we need to... Um, and they give us a Uninet corporate... Oh, okay. Is this another shop? It's not. Oh, okay. QuadraCorp is where we connected before. And then Uninet's where we're going to go now. Okay, I got it. Alright, so let's set up the connections. So the more places that we break into, the more that we can bounce our signal around. So from the gateway, we'll go to Internic. And then from Internic, we'll go to... What do we need to go to? Is this the target? It is. Right? Yeah, okay. It is. It is the target. Okay, so from Gateway, we'll go to Internet. From Internet, we'll go to the test machine. We'll go to the server system, the access server, and then Uninet over there. Imagine how, like, bad your connection would be. <laughs> Imagine how slow this would be in real life. If you if you had to connect from Moscow to what is that, Chad? Like Chad or Burundi? And then from Chad There's Chad over there. Where is this? Um is that Um I don't know what African country that is. It'd be so slow. It'd be like playing chess over Morse code. It'd be so slow. I guess this is this is like the future, so everybody's internet's really good. Even still, connecting to anywhere in Africa is probably not going to be that good. Then we go from Africa to Shanghai, and then from Shanghai to like Jakarta, and then from Jakarta to Queensland, <laughs> and then from Queensland we go all the way over to Brazil. That seems awful. All right, let's do it. All right, so open up the mail. We need to delete Unidata 69. Nice, 660. We'll open up our um, dictionary hacker. And go. Oh, it's way faster. Oh my God. File server. We need to find 69660. There it is. Delete 69660. It's deleted. Um, Alright. Anything else? Do we then use the log deleter? It's like the target log. Uh, I don't really know how to use this. Oh, view logs. Okay. There we go. So, a lot like in Greyhack, same sort of thing. All right. Congratulations. We got the other half of our funds. So we did that as well. Congratulations, Agent. You have reached the next uplink rating. Your rating is now a novice. Awesome. How much money do we have? 2800. Did I get the backups of the logs? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see those. Can we go to the test machine and like look at what? Because I'm not in here long enough to see. Okay. Hang on.
Oh, there's a terminal. <laughs> uh, how do I exit the terminal? Okay, disconnect. Interesting. Connection from 127001 closes. That's a local address you can't connect. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a video game. It doesn't have to be realistic. <laughs> Alright. Well, we did it. We did the uh, mission. Let's find another one. I, th I don't know. I guess we can. Let's look at help. Um... Gateway computers. We don't care about gateway computers. That's pretty self-explanatory. Elliptic curve systems? Faced with the growing threat of hackers, many companies have begun using elliptic curve cryptography. This is a real thing. A user on a system must input a large block of data in sequence synchronized with the system. This cannot be done by hand. The timing must be perfect. Elliptic curve cryptography is popular due to the large amount of CPU power needed to force crack it. However, as with all cryptography, even this system can be broken given enough time and CPU cycles. Agents can use the Decipher software tool to force crack one of these systems, but fast CPU rig will be required. I don't think I could. Um, I could only do it when I was connected to... like, the machine. Like the terminal, you only run it. I guess you're like running root. You're you're running on root from the the victim com computer. Let's try it again. Hold on. Let me let me show you some. Let's let's see. Let's see what we can do. I don't I don't think it's that good. I don't think it's that granular. Yeah, it doesn't recognize LS. It doesn't recognize like dash OS. Uh, files. Uh, file. CD. CG. Um. I don't know. Um. I can check and see what the console commands are in um like game facts if we go to game facts is is there like a instruction on that this is something that you would probably read on um your manual that came with the game oh my god it has like no information <laughs> it is nothing there's nothing on this hang on it's the iOS version. Okay, wait, this might be better. Oh, there's a bank hacking guide. All right. I'm reading the guide. Give me a moment. Uh, let's see here. Where would it say... HUD, long connections, tracing, deleting your logs. I guess I should just put this on screen. I'll just put this on screen. Hang on. Let's let's give it a read. Because this, this is what you really ought to have knowledge of before you start doing the game. Give me a second. I need to reformat this. Make this bigger as well. Okay. It, yeah, I don't think it's like in Greyhack. 
unfortunately, it's not going to be like in Greyhack where it's really robust. This is a lot simpler. This is a lot more like a, a, a video game version or a movie version. Uh, okay, this is going to go over myself, but that's okay. All right. So, um, hmm. does he tell you about how to use... And then there are some storyline missions. Okay, let's just go and see. Always contact the employer. Always ask for more money and half the money in advance. Generally, the 10% bonus is only given if your rank greatly surpasses the mission difficulty. The advance payment is accepted more often than not. The advantage of giving money in advance is that you can buy more software before attempting it. Okay. Even if missions are still out of your league but acceptable, just accept them with advance payment. You'll get to completing them eventually. Whatever is generated on the mission screen is completely random. I've had mission lists with five file missions, but also more than ten. Some tiers of missions might be completely missing initially in your game, and they'll only start appearing after you fast forward. As you complete about five file missions, your rank will again increase. This will render academic missions available. So yes, 127001 is is your IP, <laughs> is your fake IP in the game. Uh, shows the game speed and CPU usage. World map. Okay, so green means links are required for missions. Orange are highlighted links. Dotted means you have active user credentials and bolded means you have active admin credentials. Okay. Uh... Right. When you finally start a hack for your missions, go to the world map. You can hack the system directly, but you'll be traced instantly, which is not good. First bounce to Internic, and then about another 10 systems, then to the target. More systems between... In between means a longer sy trace. Systems with accounts influence the trace time more. You can say, save the connections to spare time. Let's say you save a connection through Internic and eight banks. You can use it any time, kept even when logging out. You can actually connect to a system that's part of your chain. By clicking the specific system, it will remove that from the chain. They also revoke more quickly. This is this is all their own input after playing the game. After connection starting from the girl be passively traced. The feds go from system to system until they find yours and seize your hardware. In the last case, uplink disavows you. Most passive traces will find you in three in-game days. In that time, you have this intended way to avoid being traced. Go to one of your systems you used in the connection, which is preferred, preferably into Nick. Crack the admin and delete the relative. So you have to hack into your own corporation and crack the admin section and delete the relative log. Try to get log delete to version 4 as soon as possible. Okay. And then blow up your gateway. It's more of a fail save. But you have brought, bought a motion sensor and gateway nuke. Keep the sensor running. If at any point it goes red, you screwed something up. When this happens, you have about 10 seconds to blow up your gateway. If done so, the passive trace will void, yet you will have to start over with a startup gateway. So what I've been doing is I've been manually disconnecting ahead of the, before the trace gets completed, but I guess what I need to be doing is actually hacking into Internic and deleting my logs there. 
Techno Mage. Okay. And then he goes on to describe... Here's just a table of all the things that you can buy. Okay. That's fine. You can buy Gateway. It's also fine. You can actually create a Gateway yourself. This needs a Gateway file name. Not bigger than 400 by 300. A Gateway TIFF. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, you can make your own like gateway. Why would you do that? It's just it's just cosmetic, right? There's no way that would affect like the actual in-game thing. That that's insane if that affects that. Uh that's storyline stuff. We haven't gotten to compromising the other security systems yet. We can hack the stock market. This is a lot of information to take in. Oh, okay. So the public access server is like the... It's like a... Um, VPN. Is what we would call it today. He also has a guide for bank hacking. So, in addition to ha hacking in the missions, you can hack the banks. For 18,000, you can actually attempt to transfer, yet it's quite stressful. The idea is that you attempt this when you do not yet have access to a HUD connection analysis and bypasses. The consequences are that you will have an active trace which is very fast, and you need an account on the sender's bank. You don't have time to disable the proxy. So he says, buy all this stuff. This seems like it's end game type of things or mid game is what you would do that. Okay, I don't want to read this. Feels like a lot like Hacknet. It's not as in depth as this game, but it comes a main flow. Yeah, Hacknet's very similar. I think next week we'll play Hacknet. I have two other hacking games that we can play. In addition to what we're already doing. And I want to come back to Grey Hat as well. Okay, let me mute that window. Okay, all right, let's back into the game. Um, okay, so he said that we could actually hack in to Internet. All right, before we do that, Oh, that's a zoom. Okay. Do I get more options if I zoom? No. Okay. Got you. And then these are the bookmarks on that side. Okay. So if I want to hack into Internet, right? Uh, what if I did gateway to the bank? And then to the test machine, the services system, access server, and then Internet itself.
We'll do a dictionary hacker, give it some more CPU cycles. All right, we're in. Okay, so it says here, connection from 127 us, routed to that, to that, to that, to that, to that, to that, access file. So what if I just go in and log delete everything? I'm not being traced. This OST is so good. So now I guess I'm not going to be, like, chased by the government. Because I don't have any records now. Oh, can I add these? Let's just give ourselves all the public access. Yeah, just add these. And then let's give ourselves. I, I don't know. Is it? Because I want to have more connections so that I have a, a longer trace time. And then maybe like... Uh, this one and... Like that one. Let me disconnect. Okay, so I've got a lot more connections. Can I connect to those connections? I can. Okay. So now I have... Oh my god, where the hell was that? Now I have lots more things that I can jump through to do a mission on. Hmm. So from here, I can go to like there and 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 there. And, there. and it doesn't seem like there's anything stopping me from doing that. Uh, how much is in our bank? Twenty eight hundred. What can we buy? Let's go to uh, let's go to the shop. Um. We want a better log deleter. What we have right now? We have log deleter level one. So log deleter seems like the first thing that you would want to level. We could spend all of our money on version 3. Well, we could spend all of our money on version 4 if we take another um, mission. So let's just try another mission. Let's try a simple mission. And we'll do what they suggest. And I'll ask for more money. Okay. I want half the money now. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go into Signal Microsystems. And we're going to delete that data. Okay. Let's see how well this works when I have all these other additional connections. So we just got to go in, we just got to get the data. There's the target, Signal Microsystems. So from the gateway, we'll go... Um, we'll go here. <laughs> we'll go here. 
two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My God. <laughs> All right. right. No traces. Okay. We use our dictionary hacker. The dictionary hacker seems to be doing very well. Also, let's get the mail up. Okay, so we need to delete SIG data 66432. Proceed. Oh, server. SIG data 66432, where is it? There it is. Deleted. Alright. Then we'll go to admin, logs, and we'll delete our logs. Hacks. Hacking. And we have plenty of time to do this. And I think this is all okay. Nothing there. Records? Okay, I don't know what the view records means. And disconnect. Okay. So, a lot more, like, time to do this. I've done the thing that you said that you need me to do. Congratulations! Okay. Awesome. So we can just grind on these. It, having these additional servers makes it a lot easier. It gives you a lot more time. How much money do we have now? Oh, we got 4,500. Excellent. So now we can go to the shop. And we can buy the best log deleter. Deletes an access log from a computer, moves other logs up to cover empty space, impossible to detect. Patches. I guess we can't sell our um, software. All right, our log deleter is 4.0, very good. Uh, we don't need the lower version. Okay. Hmm. All right, this all seems pretty good. Let's do another mission. We'll do another simple one. This is 2200 credits. Uh, an uplink rating of confident. I'm still a novice. Okay, I can't do that. But this. Okay, this is easy. With half the money now. Okay. I guess what I could do is I could actually do... Um, wait a second. Could I do multiple? Because there's no time limit for these, I don't think, right? So can I also accept this and contact them? I can't. Okay. So we have to go to Mirage Tech and delete... You can find the link to delete itself. Yeah, you could. You could actually do that. And now I don't know what you would do. You'd have to blow up your machine or something. Um, we have to get to Mirage Tech and we have to get to Matrix. 
Okay. Now that we have like a million connections, this should not be that big of a deal. So, um... Oh, let's go. Mirage Tech. And there's Matrix. So we'll go to Sync, and then from Sync we'll go to 1, uh, 2, Do we have to go to Internic first? I wonder if we have to go to Internic first. We'll go to Internic first. And then we'll go back this way. And then we'll go this way and this way. This way. This way. This way. This way. This way. <laughs> and this way. Okay, I think that's enough. Good. Alright. This is Mirage Tech. It will connect. Mirage Tech. Delete 84407. Open up the dictionary hacker. Proceed. Oh, we got no time at all. File server. 84407. There it is. It's gone. Go to admin. View the logs. Uh, security log deleter. Awesome. And that. Congratulations. Okay, good. Now let's do the other one. This is Matrix and... <laughs> so we deleted Mirage Tech's um, data. Now Mirage Tech is asking us to delete Matrix's data. So I think we just deleted both people's data. Very funny. But yeah, this is like... This is a lot realistic, actually. This is kind of how people do it. It's a very gamified way of doing it, and you would never do this in, like, real life. Don't hack other people, by the way. <laughs> Go up this way. This is such a spaghetti connection, it's, it's disgusting. Alright, we're in. All right. Matt data 8896. That. Good. Admin. Orgs. We're like a ghost. It's like we were never there. Easy money. Awesome. How much money did we make in that short span of time? We've already almost made back 4,000, so that... Very lucrative. Very lucrative um, hacking into... <laughs> Crime really does pay. All right. Let's go back to the shop and see what we got. Generator, this job has been assigned difficulty three. Uh, I don't think we've ranked up yet, have we? We're still a novice, so we can't do that. Can't do that. 
Okay, we can do this. Okay, so we can do these two missions. And we've not reached that yet. What about these? This requires us to have more storage space. Um, how much storage space do we have? We've got 24 giga quads. This only requires three. Uh, but it's only 1400. It's not very lucrative. It'd be more lucrative. These are just easier. So we could take this. This is quite lucrative. We'll take this one. Okay, and then we'll take... We'll just take all of these ones that we delete things, and we'll try to scam him for more money. Oh, cool. Okay, we'll give you 14 credit... 1,400 credits because of your reputation. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. We're getting loads of cash. Loads of dosh. Okay, first things first, we gotta go and hack into hmm, UniNet and delete the data. Okay, easy peasy. There's UniNet, we'll go from Signal. So we'll go Gateway, Inanik, and then back to Jupiter, then there, there, and then there, and then there, there. Hoggers. Beep, 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 beep. All right. We're on Uninet, and we need to delete 455. Open up a cracker. We'll do the dictionary hacker. Code. Oh, we already know the code. Wait. Do we not? I thought we already knew the code. Oh, because we broke in here before they deleted it. I guess that's why. Whatever, that's fine. We have plenty of time. Uh, 455, it's right there. And then we go to the logs. I hope I'm, de I hope I'm deleting the right logs as well. I imagine it goes from top to bottom. I think they did, yeah. I think they closed it. Congratulations, very good, thank you. Alright, uh, <clears throat> Signal is the next one. That's down there. Oh, they want that one, that machine. Yeah, I guess I could have done that as well. Uh, I'm ke I keep thinking like this is realistic, where you would never go from like... Burundi to Brazil and then back to North Africa, but this isn't realistic entirely. I think I can just connect to any of these and it's not really going to slow me down. We're also just manipulating data, so it's not like... Um, it's not like we're downloading the data, we're just like deleting it. Okay, there's our target.
Oh, I wonder if Dictionary doesn't break it after the first time. It looks like Dictionary doesn't break it after the first time. Dictionary breaks it the first time, but then after the first time, you have to use Password Breaker. I guess that balances it out, because otherwise it would be very broken. Right, we need, uh, 26.325. There it is. We can lean up our logs. I have plenty of time, so I'll clean up the deleted ones as well. We out. Okay, looks like we did it and we leveled up. Yep. Adelphi is very happy. I am now confident in my abilities. And my Neuromancer rating has changed to aggressive. I'm very aggressive. Okay. Very good. Then the last one here is on Uninet again. How much money do I have? I've got loads of money. Uh, let's buy a better password cracker in that case. <clears throat> this this game, it, it, it'll run on a phone. It actually is really robust because it's a very simple game. And I could see this being very addictive, especially in your downtime, if you just had a little downtime thing that you wanted to do. All right, what, um... We've got Password Breaker version 1. Let's buy Password v Breaker better version. Oh, can we not upgrade it? Okay. I guess we can't upgrade that. We can't upgrade the hacker disc dictionary either. Okay. Um, I don't know what else that we need. What would be better? Why do you have to buy better tracers? So level four tells you the amount, the exact amount of time left before the trace happens. We really can't increase. Okay. File deleter upgrade. I was thinking about doing that, maybe. It's it's quite cheap. Deletes the contents of an access log from a computer, leaves it behind. What's the upgraded version? Deletes an access log, leaves a distinctive black space behind. Copies another user's legitimate access log over the top of your own. Very difficult. And level four. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah, let's get this. Uh, do we have 4,000 monies? Oh, we have loads of money. Okay. Let's, let's purchase the best log deleter. Did I buy log deleter? I wanted to buy a uh, file deleter. Oopsies. Can I, <laughs> can I sell that? Oh well, I spent $4,000 on nothing.
I wanted file deleter. <laughs> okay, there is no better file deleter. I can't really sell my my things that I bought. I guess I guess you couldn't. I guess it's just data, right? Oh well. But no, file deleter is just as good as it can be, apparently. Yeah, it's just as good as it can be. That is something that kind of sucks that you can't... Um, can't get rid of things that you bought that you didn't mean to buy. And you also have to, like, rebuy the things that you already have. So, like, the base rate of the version number is, like... You can't just upgrade. You have to pay... So, like, if the base version is 600, and then the version 2 is 1200, you can't just pay an additional 600 to get the version 2. You have to pay 1200, so it's cumulative. Which isn't really technically accurate, I guess. You would... Normally, you would just up upgrade it after buying it, and you have limitless access, but... I don't know. Oh, well. 4,000 here or there. Not a tremendous big deal. Right, let's go to the missions. We'll, let's try to make up some of that money that we lost by being stupid. We'll take a hack in and delete key files. And then we'll take... Um, We can do a copy, surely. Yeah, we'll take this. See if we can get more money for it. Okay. Now we'll take this because it's the same thing. I want more money. Awesome. Um... Okay, great. Very good. I could be taking more missions, but um, I choose not to. Also, I'm going to run to the bathroom real quick since we're all kind of on lurk mode at the moment. Um, I'll be right back. Let's just take a, a little three minute break or so. Uh, I'm going to just run to the bathroom real quick. We'll pause the game. And I'll keep the music running. And... But I will go over to my Be Right Back screen. One of these days. Once it loads everything. There we go. Alright. Be right back. Turn off the BGM. Okay. I will be right back. 